Maybe you're asking yourself, should you get the new Sony ZV-1 or the Sony a6400 as your new vlogging camera? Well today, I'm going to try and help you make that decision by making a completely unbiased, unpaid comparison of these two separate cameras. Let's get into it. Hi guys, thanks for clicking on this video. I'm the Tactical Traveler, and I'm a straight shooter who just tells it like I see it. So if you value honest opinions from a regular guy who actually buys, with his own money, the equipment that, and gear that he shows on his channel, maybe you should consider sticking around and hitting that subscribe button before you leave. Well, if you're considering purchasing one of these two cameras for vlogging, you're probably a lot more interested in how they perform outside in the wild so let's go ahead and take these two cameras outside into my backyard and we'll make some comparisons, get some side-by-side -side footage and discuss some of the key differences. Then we'll come back in here and, and finish up. Let's go. Two cameras, which is better between these two. You saw the title of the video, so you kind of know which two cameras I'm talking about here. I got to close my eyes so I don't even look at them. The ZV-1 versus the A6400. Which one is better? That's the question. We're going to find out right now. Okay, so with these two cameras, I've tried my best to get them, you know, the, the A6400, which is going to be on your left, and the ZV-1, which is going to be on your right. I'm using the audio from the ZV-1. I'll switch to the audio briefly here for the A6400. Now. All right, so now we're on the audio for the A6400, and this is what you get with the onboard mics. Probably not as good as the, the ZV-1. That's one thing that they've definitely improved on is the audio uh, from the mics here on the ZV-1. What do you think of picture quality? Both of these are in fully automatic mode. On the A6400, I'm using the 16 to 50 kit lens, which I feel like is the, the closest uh, equivalent to the lens that's on the, the ZV-1. What do you guys think? I know when I've compared them, looking at them, I feel like the ZV-1 is just a little bit sharper. They're both in 4K, 24 frames a second. Um, everything else is just fully automatic. No picture profiles, no nothing. Just full auto mode. And we're out here in the afternoon, still pretty bright out. Not exactly ideal situation for these cameras. Is one better with focus? Is one better with audio? I think the audio in the ZV-1 is better. I've got them both on little selfie sticks here. What about stabilization? So let's just switch and do one camera at a time and do a comparison that way. For our next comparison here, let's just do the auto exposure. I think that's where the ZV-1 really shines. This is the smartest camera. So for fully automatic mode, I think this camera really does a great job. So right now I've got the sun that way in my face. Let's go ahead and turn and we became backlit. And how is it doing? Is it adjusting? Is it dealing with it? Do you even look at that? How's that handling it? How's that auto exposure adjustment there? Now let's turn. Oh, the zebras, the zebras are on my face, but then like I see they slowly disappear and there we are. So let's do that same move with the A6400 and see how it's auto exposure works. So here we are, A6400, um, lots of bugs here. It's Florida, it's terrible, it's hot, it's like hundred degrees, sun's in my face. Let's flip it around real quick. How are we doing? Let's give it a second. Can the exposure adjust? I see some of the zebras in the sky going away, but I don't really see my face that well. Let's, let's get here. Let's back. Can you handle this, Sony? Are you capable of this type of, this type of thing here? And then let's bring it back, bring it back. And zebras on the face. Let me go away. So how do those two do as far as auto exposure and being able to adjust Okay, we're gonna do just a walking test here with the ZV-1. I don't have the active steady shot on, I just have standard, standard steady shot. That's it, and this is what you can get. I'm switching hands, and I'm walking without trying to keep the camera stable. So I'm just walking. Making a quick turn here. Now I'll walk back the other way, and I'm gonna try and be a little bit more stable. I'm gonna try and smooth out my steps here a little bit and see if this helps a little, I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I don't know what my neighbors think I'm doing. Walking like a ninja. So this is a ZV-1. Let's switch real quick to the A6400 and see what we get. 
We are on the A6400. I'm going to walk the same route here through the yard. This time I'm not really making any attempt to soften my steps. I'm just walking. I'll switch hands with it here. And this is what you get with that. Now, this kit lens has optical steady shot built in. It helps a little bit. So now we'll walk back just like I did before and do my ninja walk, try and be smooth. Now, one thing that helps a little bit, I think, with the a6400 now i don't know if it's helping or not but it's a little bit heavier and i feel like heavier cameras are a little bit easier to to hold still that's just just what i've found in the past so this is me trying to be careful walking how's that work okay so now our same walking test this was with the active steady shot here so again i'm going to do the same walk i did before you'll notice it's cropped in a little bit but we have a solution for that but i'm walking without a care all right and then, now I'm going to walk back, let the exposure adjust, got the sun in the face. Now let's walk and try and keep it sort of steady. How, how is this working? Now this is a little bit of care, not quite as ninja-like walking abilities as what I had before, but I'm trying. And it's kind of windy today, so how is this doing? I actually got quite a bit of a breeze in my face. Hopefully the audio is pretty good on this. Okay, so I'm using this little selfie stick here on the, on the ZV-1. I think it gives you... You know a little bit more range and, and i can extend this out which kind of offsets the problem that that i was having with the uh the crop in thing so you can just extend this out a little bit i mean this thing goes out to about three feet but we can extend it out just one one extension i guess we call it one one segment and get a much better thing i i don't think buying that little vlogging grip for this camera is the right thing to do i think um it keeps it too short. I mean, you're gonna have it like this close. I've been at least holding it in all these shots out here. If you use that vlogging grip, you're gonna be like this close. If Sony would have made that vlogging grip extend, it would have been a whole different ball game. Now, I guess this does have a quarter 20 mount on the bottom, so I could put the vlogging grip here on the bottom of this, and then I probably wouldn't even have to extend this at all. So that's, that's an option that you can do as well if you decide to get the vlogging grip kit. But let's go ahead and extend this one and then show you with the active steady shot what, uh, what it does. We got the active steady shot on. I've extended this out one, one segment, like I said. It definitely widens things up a little bit and it makes it a lot more usable. Now, it's gonna be a little less stable because you're on that longer, longer sort of extended selfie stick here, but I think this is usable. Like this framing is fine. And now, oh, how's that sound? We got wind, it's a pretty steady wind blowing at me now. So how are we doing on this? I think, this camera by itself with just just the ease of use alone this thing is awesome so let's take it inside and talk a little bit more about it but i wanted to show sort of for the vlogging capabilities and give it a comparison sort of head-to-head -head outdoors with the a6400 we'll take it inside and do a comparison inside and then kind of give you my final thoughts on what i like about this camera and what i like about the a6400 and how i think they're kind of for two different types of people let's go inside okay welcome back into the studio here now for our next comparison let's take these two cameras and see how they stack up indoors in sort of a studio test if you're in an environment like this for our studio comparison of these two cameras i'm going to start them in automatic mode but i'm going to pretty quickly switch them to a manual exposure mode because i feel like in a studio setting that you, you can handle manual exposure. Outdoors, I think, for vlogging in the wild like we were doing outside earlier, I think that auto exposure is going to be the way to go with these cameras. But when you control the lighting like I'm doing here and the entire environment's controlled, I think it's probably easier to use manual exposure. So we're going to do that too so you can give these cameras good chances. Okay, now for the studio test with both cameras set in intelligent auto mode. We've got the A6400 on your right and the ZV-1 on your left. Both cameras set to fully automatic mode right here. Now, I'll confess the audio you're hearing now is coming from um, this guy right here. This is like the, it might even be showing in the shot a little bit. Anyways, this is coming from an external mic hooked to a Zoom H1 recorder. I like to do this inside. Now, I'll go ahead and switch right now to the audio in the ZV-1. So here's the audio coming from the ZV-1 sitting at this distance away doing uh, fully automatic mode. And again, this is the audio you can get from the A6400 in fully automatic mode. And this is the pictures you can get. Now, 
both of these are good. On the screen, the ZV-1 looks a little bit brighter to me. Now, I'm not sure if it really is brighter or if it's just the screen brightness is higher, but the picture looks better on the ZV-1 than the A6400 to me right now. That remains to be seen when we pull this footage into the computer and take a look at it. Now, both cameras are in automatic mode. The difference here being that the ZV-1, although it has a one inch sensor, it has a 1.8 inch or 1.8 is the aperture in this camera where the A6400 using the kit lens that I'm using the 16 to 50, it only goes down to 3.5. So that's probably explains the brightness difference that we saw on the screen here. Currently the ISO on the A6400 is 400 and the ISO on the ZV-1 is only 200. So it's getting a little bit brighter with that wider aperture. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to go ahead and put on a better lens. So I just wanna show you the potential of the A6400. This is what you get kit lens to kit lens is what we'll call it. And pretty good. I can see as far as focusing the boxes around my face here in the A6400 and it's it's doing phenomenal. The ZV-1, that little sticky spot on my eye and it's, it's now it's on that eye. Now it's on that eye, it's, it's sticky. Very sticky and are you getting me? Is it focusing? Oh, what? Her. There. Are they getting me good? Yeah. Focus is pretty good on these these two uh, these two cameras. I mean, the eye autofocus in video is pretty cool. This A6400 does not have that. The A6600 does. I just don't have that camera. Um, but pretty darn good here both of these guys. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave leave the ZV-1 just like it is. So this is what we're getting here on the ZV-1. I'm still using external audio because I think that's the way to go in a studio and I already gave you an audio comparison but so this is the ZV-1 in manual settings in here and I'm going to then put a different lens on my 6400 just so you guys can get an idea of what the potential is that you can get with the A6400. Just give me one second, let me do that. Okay, so now we're back. I am on the ZV-1 right here. Now let me just kind of use this camera for a second and give you a minute to, to enjoy it in all of its glory. And I think it's a pretty darn good camera for a studio camera and for a vlogging camera. All around, if you just want simple to use camera, this is, this is pretty darn impressive. Now, I didn't mention before, I'm using Picture Profile 10, which is the HLG2. So I've color graded them. I'll show you right now, just plain uncolor graded right now. I wouldn't say color graded. I just basically bump up the saturation and adjust the exposure a little bit. That's all I do. So this is what you get with nothing done and then back to how we were. Okay, so let's go over here to the A6400 now. And how you doing? That's pretty good, isn't it? I have attached the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4 which is kind of the the holy grail of lenses for the a6400 the only downside to this lens well there's a couple um a lot more ups than downs but the couple of the downsides is it's larger i mean the kit lens that i was using before this is it right here tiny little thing okay and this is a 16 to 50. this lens is much larger much heavier and has no optical steady shot in it so when you saw those comparisons outside before this would even be worse with this lens. But for in a studio setting, or if you're outside and you really have the op opportunity to hold it steady, this lens is much better. And I think you'll see now. So what I'm looking at here is a 1.4 aperture on this one. Everything's in 4K24, by the way. But here I'm at 100 ISO. And back over here on this guy, we're at still at 200 ISO in our manual settings. So this gives you an idea of what you can expect studio camera with these two cameras. This is where I think when you start adding different lenses, this lens is about $400. So you, you add 400 to the price of like 800 and change for the body here, this gets significantly more. This ZV-1 is around $800 total for everything and you get what you see right here. So, you know, so really it comes down to what, what you wanna do and where you wanna spend your money you, you, with these two things. This is the difference in quality you can, you can expect if you, you add some aftermarket lenses like this on the A6400. Although over here on this ZV-1, this, this, this is pretty darn good. Pretty darn, darn good. Okay, so let's go back to the A7 III and, and wrap it up. I said it earlier in this video and I'll, when we were outside and I'll say it again. This auto exposure on the ZV-1 is the smartest auto exposure of any camera I've ever seen. I was in absolutely horrendous conditions outside. Very bright sunlight. The worst time to, to even try and make a video and... This thing performed pretty darn well. So 
As far as auto exposure, this did well, but I gotta admit, when going back and reviewing the footage, I'm pretty surprised how well this guy did. I actually, prior to making this video, never even used the A6400 in its intelligent auto mode, and it's kinda easy. I feel like I could have made some more videos with this that would have been a lot easier to handle if I would have used it more. So I might actually use this occasionally in that mode. Sometimes I'm just gonna be out and about and pointing the camera at myself, vlogging. I think this definitely has a place for it. So just bottom line, the ZV-1 is ideal for people who are more vlogging on the go, like theme park, family, or travel vloggers. And the A6400 works pretty well in these circumstances also, but it offers more options. If your goal is to get the most cinematic footage, I guess that's what everyone talks about, although I think you could probably do that with this pretty close. You know, at this price point, these things are real similar. I think the A6400 is a great starter camera if, if you're looking to get cinematic footage and, and go that sort of route with, with your, your content that you create. And if you're more into vlogging and storytelling and just want to show locations and traveling, I think the ZV-1 is probably the way to go for you if you're not kind of into the, the tech side of camera. So let me know your opinion down below. Do you think the A6400 is better or worse than the ZV-1? And would you like to see me make some more content about my ZV-1? I know a lot of people have made videos about them, but I might do some other comparisons with my Osmo Pocket, my Osmo Action, and maybe even test some different external microphones that wouldn't really add to the overall footprint of this camera too much. Let me know down below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.